I'm Keith Shockley, uh, doing an interview for Electronic Oasis. Now, you might know who I am, you might not. DJ name is Wizzy KG. I go back to production with a bunch of rappers, recording artists, singers, whatever, remixes. Uh, Formerly from the Bomb Squad, main, one of the main production teams of Public Enemy, uh, Visual Melody, uh, other ones, and a handful of eternal voices. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's about the art and the passion. My first production, man, was uh, in the 80s, man. Uh, we had got a deal with this now defunct an independent dance label called Vanguard Records. Had a few hits. Um, and uh, that was my first experience of doing records on wax. I got a production basically because we had a radio station uh, at Adelphi University called BAU. And you gotta understand, early 80s, there wasn't a lot of rap records like we had now. You know, it was, rap was just starting to be pressed uh, pressed on wax. Um, the major labels wasn't dealing with rap music. Uh, we used to, um, I had a, me, my brother, Chuck, Flav, uh, we had a, uh, I should say a production studio in Hempstead, and I had a drum machine and a bass line. Right, for all you electronica cats, I had the original Rolling 303, TB 303 baseline, hooked up with the Rolling CR 8000 drum machine. So my, my technical skills is deep. <laughs> um, and I used to produce a lot of beats for the local groups to fill up rap time on the radio station. Um, what I mean by rap time is, like I said before, we didn't have a lot of rap music coming through, but we was playing a lot of Break beats, a lot of R and B, everything that was funky that we played, you know, that we DJ with either in the parks or in the clubs. Some of my favorite artists. You know what? I think they were all my favorite artists. <laughs> they were all my favorite artists. Um, some of my favorite artists was, you know, I did a lot of groups, um, and I because it was so new and exciting. Um, 99% of the artists was my favorite because we worked with artists that had something, whether it was the Slick Rick, everybody knows, to LL. One of my most astonishing artists that I was, was, was bananas to me was LL because LL would, I, I, I did two songs with him. He was one take and I was amazed that he was one take. I made him do the song. I made him do the song over like four more times because I couldn't believe it was one tape. Working with guys like coming up with Chuck D, you know, um, Chuck was the kind of cat that warmed up in the studio. The longer he went, the better he got. And usually most people, when they go for a long time, their voice used to go and all that. Chuck never. Ice Cube was, the, was another one that came with his plan from the West Coast coming out of NWA. Um, the most inventive and uh, the most creative to me uh, was Slick Rick. Um, doing his first album, Great Adventures of Slick Rick. It was crazy because I've never seen this. I see cats come in, they spit their lyrics, they got their verse, their chorus, their hooks. No, Rick would come in and do a masterpiece. He would do stuff like when he was doing um, uh, children's story, you know, I've never seen it done because this was new. He would do his verse and then he would leave out lines. 
and we thought he was forgetting his line. No, he would go back and do overdubs and then change the voice. That was like, that was sort of like crazy because I'm used to everybody just coming in, dropping their lyrics, spitting their rhymes, and you know, I'm this, da, 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 da. not like Rick was doing. My brother, we had hooked up again. He was running, he was running with a bunch of cats overseas in London, running with the London Posse. Uh, I call it the London Posse, but it was actually a London Posse. Uh, <laughs> um, the new future music, which was called dubstep. Now, this was maybe like seven, seven years ago. I that I was introduced to that. Not like it is today. I was introduced from the London cat. So with him, you know, I met Scream, Banger, Code Nine, Koki, uh, Benji B, Plastician. Uh, I can go on and on. Uh, so dude, it was refreshing. It was, I, you know, because you gotta understand, like seven years ago, to me, rap was becoming like just, uh, just the same, nothing different. Started to become more chant oriented, less lyrics. People repeat the same things over and over. Um, I got into it and, it, and it just reminded me of early rap. You know, nobody knew about it. It was on the grind. Um, it was coming up. And the biggest thing I liked about it was the bass. Now, uh, we love bass in the world. That's what made hip hop what it was. Was the bass and the big 808s coming through the tracks where it played at the club and it just rattled the floor. So, um, from then, man, I just took a liking to it. And, um, so a lot of light right now. <laughs> I like a lot of things, but it, it became it became my music of choice because it was experimental. And uh, Earl Grey tea. That's how much I like the steps. Earl Grey. We hooked up getting down at Women Music Conference because we was on the panel. Me and Hank was on the panel down there. And at the awards presentation, and it was a awards presentation, it was giving me the best dance music of the world. You know, um, they was really into what we was doing. Um, and our influence from the Funny Mom Squad has influenced the whole dance world because we did dance music too. We decided we wanted to throw a pool party. And we just took Scream, Nala, um, Sam XL, um, Plastician was with us. Um, Seco and Moby, Sergeant Pulse. So we just took out the whole pool and just got down. Now it was weird. It was the, the reason why it was weird, there was people there coming in and out because it was the day, it was a pool party. But Dubstep at that time wasn't popular. They was looking at this shit like, oh, it comes those people was like, yo, oh, too much bass, turn it down. You know, we was, uh, we was vibrating the hotel from the outside, and people was trying to figure it out. It was so bananas, like at the pool. This is some crazy shit. If you was in the water, you could feel the sub bass vibrating the water. Like it was a wave. That's how much bass that was going on. And that shit was like, yeah, I had to go into the water just to feel that shit. That shit was nuts. <laughs> that was crazy. But that was like, I think that was the start and the opening day. The first time Dubstep was really at the Winter Music Conference. Because they didn't, you know, nobody knew it. So, you know, they had all the dance cats in there, you know, called Cox and all these kind of cats. So, all the big dance cats were there. And it, but it, it opened up a bunch of people's eyes to it at that conference. Now, I think it might have dominated the last conference. <laughs>
Power Five was started as a management uh, section that me and Fats uh, thought about. Uh, actually, Fats came up with the basic idea that we uh, was using Power Five just as a marketing team. Then we wanted to take on a bunch of DJs and use the DJs to mark to brand the company product because now we're in the world of the DJs have become bigger than the artists all the DJs are the artists they're no longer just regular resident DJs anymore. and with Power 5 we want to take DJs and use that and develop a lifestyle with branding company that was basically the thing it's just a collection of unions of DJs not like we're running around here trying to be like some rock boys, but it's just a union of DJs coming to the table from different, you know, we got one, and they, we, we got them in all different styles of music. We started First Fridays because hey, we're in a spot that has a facility that we can get to <laughs> easily. <laughs> Um, and First Friday was basically put together to, um, we got a lot of DJs that, that was in our crew. So, you know, have something to do. Because you gotta understand, this is a nightlife business. So, if you don't have events going on, what good are you trying to, you know, what good are you trying to have a marketing or branding company if they can't see where you're working at and what the events that you're doing? So, First Friday was designed for that. And then, came about, I wanted I wanted a bunch of DJs. I didn't care what you know what style of music you was, because I don't want this looking like you are gonna give one kind of music. I just wanted to do what we're gonna call it future music. Whatever it is that you do come in and do your set. And man, I would love a lot of DJs to come to. Um, whether they, you know, big DJs, but it's a small venue. So it's something that I was mainly wanting to keep a lot of. Um, big local talent coming through. I like a lot of DJs, so if I can grab them and come through on the first Friday, I want to put them down. If they want to get down, come through a set. It's like, it's cool, because I like to hear different things. I'm in the zone of like, let me see what you do. I'm not interested in, in they doing what the population, I want DJs in here that do what they like to do on a level that has an audience. Whatever it is, you know, whatever style, as long as you got an audience, let's bring them through, let's get down. And then our next first Fridays is uh, May 4th. So uh, get down, man, get down here 10 to 4. We keep it banging. Here at Brooklyn Fireproof, 119 Ingram. Uh, that gallery, y'all hear the music banging. They be telling me to turn it down because I got too much bass in it, but it's crazy. Um, I got a couple of projects working on my EP right now, um, getting that together. Uh, and collaborations, man, wow. I like so many people. I, I'm just gonna reach out to, to the world. So you understand, I go both, I can get the new cats and the older cats. It's like me trying to narrow down for per projects who I wanna work with. Uh, it's so mad, it's so crazy. Cause I've been doing this for a while. And I still love it, I still have the passion. Bass Nets is a great favorite. A-Track is, uh, Kids, they, they're building Chromio, another one. There's, there's, there's different ones. Um, there's so there's so much new stuff in there. My, my age sense is I try to keep up with it. <laughs> I try to keep up with the days, but um, there's there's uh, there's a ton. Of it. And it's like um, I listen to a lot of different stuff that comes out, and I check out people's production and. Cats are just amazing at what they're doing and what they're working. It's just like, it's, 
I, I sometimes become in the wall. I become like a, I become like a, I am a fan um, of a lot of cats, especially when I get to this stuff. Um, no kid falls with DL, that's the next stuff. Um, uh, lot. Um, I, I hate questions like that. There's a lot of people. And, and, and seriously, it, it, it depends upon, you know, what songs it is. Um, another kid I, I like that does some crazy stuff. He's, he's up in the camera. Uh, he does some like, really low bass stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's so, I'm going to keep proceeding for that question. It's millions of them. I have a Monday mix coming up. Um, this Monday, the 16th. Um, oh, I, I'm going to go in on some, on some other things. Uh, I don't want to peep it out yet, but y'all just stay tuned and listen. It's going to be straight and hardcore. Really hard. Hard, hard, hard. Insanely hard. Insanely hard. My mom's going to hate this. <laughs> she, she hates me. She loves dub music. Dub music. She hates dub music. Don't worry about it. My mom got nothing to do with this. <laughs> so let's keep shocking. AKA Wizard KG. That's what you see when I go out and do it. Electronica always. <laughs>